Greetings programs. Thank you for your interest in the outer rim dome system. Uh, for those of you who uh, don't know, the outer rim dome system is part of the uh, warp core dome system, and it's the third piece of the trilogy. Uh, the warp core dome system consists of the warp core base plate, which allows you to magnetically mount vertical animations in it. And then we have the warp core inner rim PCB set, which is the center signal PCB in the middle with the power cell PCB and then some arc PCBs. And then finally, we have the outer rim PCB set, which is what you see here, uh, which consists of six PCBs. Uh, we have three six layer PCBs with uh, four, cord la four cord layers of copper each. And we have three bridge PCBs, so which are four layers, four layers, and then just two layers, because this one doesn't have any power going through it. Uh, which or very little power going through it, which is nice. Uh, the idea was to not create a coil inside the dome. So we break it between board OR2 and OR3 as not to complete the circle on that. So let's get down to it and take a look here and see what we have. Uh, first, let's look at the overview. What is this? Well, what this is is a giant signal distribution board system. Uh, it consists of the outer rim one, the two, the three, and the bridge boards that make one big ring out of it. So how does that work? Well, you basically have a simple signal uh, and a single signal input piece here where you put your uh, digital, your, your serial out, your I2C out, and your servo signals. Um, you power it with these two terminals, and it takes that signal and shoots it around the ring. Uh, picking up power for the servos and the Arduinos and the main power down here on this other uh, ring here on OR3. So let's take a walk around this thing and, and say, well, what is it? So here's what we got. OR1 is our, is our signal piece. That's the first one. So when you plug your Marduino or your Stealth or whatever you're using into this input bank, it's going to take all these signals and shoot them around the ring. So the first signal that shoots out, which would be this one, which is Pi Panel 4, which is in, in Section 12 or Pin 12, um, that obviously runs straight up to your Pi, power, Pi Panel servo that we have. Uh, important to note that the reason these are laid out the way they are is because I wanted to have the best location for you to put these things on that required the smallest amount of servo wire uh, so in a lot of cases, you will simply run a short wire from the servo straight down the wall and into the rim uh, boards. So very simple. So this eliminates a ton of copper inside your dome. So signal pins are here. Plug it into the bank. We head this way. Well, we've got a 5-volt and a 12-volt power supply for your Markduino or your Stealth or whatever you're using. Uh, we have ser uh, serial pins here and here that you can use that are coming off of the warp core. So if you have a microcontroller inside the core and you wanna get some data out here to the rim, then you can use those pins to do so. Um, as we continue going this way, we will get to the five volt power lead that you could use for TSIS or whatever logic you're using. And then we get to a six pin bank here um, labeled A through F. Now those six pins are for your rear logics at this point. So this ring, or rim piece is back in the back of the dome, actually. Your rear logics are literally right above this on here. So this allows you to connect to the pin bank up here, which is in the front of the dome, uh, where your front logic would be, and have these two working together. So if you have a, a um, JoyMonkey logic or a TSIS logic or, or whatever you have, um, you'll be able to, or AstroPixels, you'll be able to plug into these and uh, work them appropriately. Going around here, we have our rear hollow projector NeoPixel pins, our rear hollow projector X and Y axis servos, Pi Panel 5 servos, and top panel servos, which is the center uh, panel at the top of the dome. Pi Panel 5, what is that? Because, Doug, we've only got four Pi Panels. The other two are occupied by a, by a periscope and a hollow projector. Well, we have a lot of creativity in this club, and so I wanted to be able to accommodate anyone in any dome panel situation. So we may have bots that don't have, or droids that don't have uh, periscopes and hollow projectors in the top, and if they don't, awesome. You can use this rim to animate every conceivable panel on the dome, both around the sides and across the top. So there's a lot uh, that you can do with it. And I wanted to make it pretty universal as we were going. So. 
from OR1, uh, we pop over to, uh, actually we're gonna go, we're gonna go this way. So if we go this way around OR1, we're gonna connect to OR2, uh, which is this ring. So we're gonna come in through the bridge and then we're going to hit pi panel three, dome panel six, dome panel seven. And then we have five and 12 volt power for logics. We have a serial pin here for logics, or uh, pins. Uh, we have I2C pins for logics. We're back to our six uh, pin bank to go to the, uh, to the logics, the rear and front logics. We have dome panel eight, Death Star plans card reader. So if you have a card reader plugged into the front of your droid uh, where you stick the Death Star plans in, this is your junction that's gonna take it back to the other rim piece on OR3, but that's where this is for now. Pi panel two interface, digital, uh, serial pins again, PSI I2C, 12 volt PSI, five volt PSI, serial pins again, uh, HP system, uh, I2C communication, HP five volt system, and then we have our HP uh, pin bank here that is, is used to uh, send NeoPixel signal around the ring, but also has the ability to jumper back to the main input bank. Why would we wanna do that? Well, if you're using a hollow projector uh, system that ha like Filthies that has a, uh, a servo control board, then you're not gonna be using this main bank to send servo signal. Uh, you're going to be originating your servo signal on your hollow projectors from here, uh, meaning that your front hollow projector would simply plug into the front HP servo directly, but your top and your rear signal for your X and Y axis will plug into here. Well, then you're gonna go back to this board and these four jumpers uh, are gonna be used to jump the signal. So essentially what we're doing is we're hijacking four of these pins and we are going to jump our signal back to here for dispersal to the rear HP and also to the top HP, which is over here. So you can control your HPs from here, uh, like on a Marduino or something like that. But if you're using another system like Filthy System, you can accommodate it with these. And you'll use these jumpers to, to go from here to there. Um, further around, we have our front HP servo connections for X and Y. Again, if you're using an, um, um, if you're outsourcing your servo control, uh, you won't use these pins because you'd plug right into it. But if you're not, and you're like me, and you're running everything through the signal bank, your FHP pins are going to come out right here, just like your RHPs are here and your THPs are here. Continuing around, we get to another two by five pin bank, which comes out over here, and then we have pi panel one, dome panel one, two, three, and four, and then we have over here another uh, serial bank and dome panel five, magic panel I2C control, magic panel 12 volt, five volt, Death Star plans panel five volt and serial. So this will signal and juice the Death Star plan setup. And this is where our Death Star plans card reader pins come out. Now we are moving to the MagTag interface that goes to the power cell of which we have a serial connection and an Omega and Delta connection, which is up here. Um, Omega and Delta are wildcard pins. You can do whatever you want with it. Uh, the TXRX, these are also direct from base plate to the controllers. You can do it. And then we have our 12 volt, our servo power, and our auxiliary power, which could be like a five volt. Important to note that there are no regulators on this board. So whatever you feed into these pins, into these screw terminals, is going to get dispersed all the way around the ring. So if you're running 14 volt and seven volt and then seven volt here uh, coming off the regulator, that's what's gonna be on all the terminals in the, in the group. So you wanna pay attention to the voltage that you're running. Um, I label them 12 and five because those, and servo because those are just the standards, but just helpful information there. This is going to feed what you give it off your power cell. Moving along, we have Pi Panel 6, you know, just in case you don't have a hollow projector up there. Your top hollow projector X and Y servos, the NeoPixel connection, and then there's pins D, E, and F, uh, which are AstroPixel related, and I have them labeled as well. And then finally, we have a PSI I2C connection and a 5 volt and a 12 volt PSI connection. And then we're on to another header, which jumps from here back to here on the R1. And that is the signal run around this ring. The bridge boards connect them to complete the ring. So that's why you'll see here, there's, this is just a simple five volt line and only if you're using the Death Star pins. If you're not, there is no power going through this board. So our ring starts and then stops. It does not connect all the way around, which is important. 
So looking at it from a what's in the box perspective, um, you will get all six of these PCBs, um, all the headers that you see here. Uh, the only thing you, you have to supply are your own right angle headers here and your own regular headers over here. I am going to have the two by five banks and the two by tens and the two by threes and a two by three uh, right angle stack because a lot of people may not have that. A two by 12 uh, hook up here four of your jumpers, and then all of the power terminals are gonna be on there. So how do you solder it? Well, the large outer rim boards, one, two, and three, are soldered like you normally would. They're soldered on the bottom, and the pins come out the top, as you see. Bridge boards are different. The bridge boards, the bridge boards have the um, sockets on the bottom, and the uh, solder joints are on the top. So this is a soldered bridge board. You'll see we have the sockets on the bottom, and then we have the soldering on the top. Now, the reason you have to do that is because you want to see the markings on the bridge boards because the markings are important to know which one goes with which. These boards are not identical. Uh, they are matched, so you wanna make sure that this side is on the OR1 board and that side is on the OR2 board uh, to make sure that everything transfers uh, properly around it. So that's how you make the bridge boards. So simple soldering exercise. Um, not complicated, it's all through hole and uh, actually kind of fun. And uh, I enjoy it because it's uh, really mind numbing <laughs> as I go. How do you install it? Well, inside the STL folder uh, that you can download is a, uh, a set of files. There are three files. One of them is a simple gasket that you can print at a PLA. Um, if you don't have a printer large enough to print this piece, it's okay. Just get yourself a non-conductive material, take one of the PCBs, trace it onto the material, and cut it, and then put the holes where you need to have them. Uh, that way, you can put the PCB on the non-conductive material and make yourself a gasket if you don't want to print one. The second STL that's in there is the bridge cap, and you can print three of these bridge caps, and what they do is uh, after you get the ring assembled, you'll put the bridge cap on the PCB and uh, that will protect the solder joints from the top. And then you'll insert it on top of here and you're all good. Um, I recommend you put a piece of VHB tape in the center of this so that when you put the cap on it, you can it sticks on. Don't VHB the whole thing. Uh, you don't need to because you're gonna wanna uh, be able to access this occasionally. And if you really want to, you could take a Sharpie and put the right ORs on here, but. Honestly, once you get it connected, uh, there's no need to see the silk screen anymore. Uh, it just looks nice and blue when you put it on top. So that's that. There's another piece called a peg, a dome peg. And uh, this is basically a small replica of the dome bullet uh, that goes through your dome if you've drilled out a dome bullet. Um, you'll use this to mount the gasket. So what you'll do is you'll push these pegs through the holes on your dome and then you'll put them, then you'll rest the gasket on them. And now you've got a mounting that you can just set it in the dome. So the way you're gonna do this is you're gonna put VHB on the bottom side of the gasket or whatever material you have, use the pegs to line it up and then press this onto the dome ring, okay? Press this on the dome ring. This is the only thing that needs to be taped are the, are the three outer rim boards. So you press, or three outer rim gaskets, sorry. So you press these onto the dome ring. Do not put another layer of VHB on here. Do not do that and then press the PCB onto this gasket. You don't wanna do that, you don't need to do that. Uh, the reason you don't need to is that the gasket will naturally float a little bit in the ring when you're putting your dome back on your droid. And that's really nice to have because it will find those screws, it'll find the dome bullets, and it will just settle right down onto it. So you won't put any stress on the solder joints or on the board, and um, it's easy to take the uh, dome on and off like that. Once these are assembled, they don't really go anywhere. The bridge boards complete the circle, and this ring is very close to tolerance, so or the rim's very close to tolerance, so it's, it's really not going to go anywhere on you. And if it does float a little bit, that's okay. The important part is to keep the solder joints from touching the aluminum dome ring, which is why you need to print this gasket or cut your own and make your own. Um, that's how you install it. There's one other thing I'd recommend too, uh, and that is to get like a wire relief uh, system for it. Could be one of these self-adhesive uh, squares that you put a zip tie through. Um, I put Velcro on mine, I'll put a piece of Velcro here, and then I'll take it and I'll just stick it down 
Uh, the reason why is that uh, the um, the these this is your connection to your mag tag, so you can run your serial cable and your power out to it, run it through here to release uh, the tension on the joints, and then run it straight to your mag tag for locking onto your power cell. This hole is directly across from the center of the power cell, so this is your junction for power and serial going into it. So nice to have something like this on there. I'm not including it as I don't have any, except I have like two. I figure you might have them in your dome or have them around. Super cheap, just grab one or make your own and put it on there. Um, but you wanna definitely have some type of tension relief right here on it. Um, as far as uh, installation on the microcontroller goes, the reason that we only have this many pins for your signal and bank is because this is a giant servo power bypass. So when the servo power comes in, it juices all the pins. So that knocks out 24 negatives and 24 positives and makes for a nice clean connection here from your microcontroller into this, which would be your Markduino or whatnot. Speaking of Markduino, um, if you're using a Markduino to control your hollow projector servos and lights, you will use this bank to control your servos. So you'll just plug the servo signal in. But if you're using the Mark Duino uh, four wire lighting harness that goes into each HP, you will need to run that wire to your HPs. So that is the only wire set that will not traverse uh, this rim, to my knowledge. Uh, we've accommodated everything else with NeoPixels, but some of you may be using the uh, more simpler ones uh, with the four wire connections. In that case, like I said, just run a wire to each one and you're good. Um, there'll be plenty of room to run those wires <laughs> because this eliminates a lot of wires. Uh, so that's the overview on it. Uh, again, soldering on the bridge boards, you solder the, the uh, joints at the top, uh, not underneath, you want your headers underneath, okay? And again, gasket gets glued to the rim uh, or taped to the rim. Um, do not tape your uh, uh, PCBs onto the gasket, there's no need. So again, what's gonna come in the box? What you see here, uh, the screw terminals, uh, the uh, special headers, uh, and, uh, and your boards. So again, I really appreciate uh, everyone using my designs in, in your droids. Uh, I, I'm very happy with this. I'm delighted with how this has turned out. And I can't wait to see what you do with it uh, when you get it, uh, which is gonna be pretty soon because they're in production now and I should definitely be shipping them by the end of, uh, of January, if not sooner. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Please uh, put uh, comments in the thread. Uh, feel free to send me a private message uh, for anything like that. And I certainly, again, do appreciate all your, all your support and everything. Happy building, and I uh, look forward to seeing what you all do.